for the lightweight championship of the Commonwealth and for the vacant lightweight championship of Great Britain. Between and in addition to the challenger from Nottingham, Tony Richards. And in this corner, defending his title, the lightweight champion of the Commonwealth from Preston, Kyle Crook. Well, you'll see when Crook takes off his robe, wearing the maroon colours of the parachute regiment and with his parachute wings on the left leg of his trunks. Billy Rafferty is the ref. Your timekeeper, Dominic Eagle of Sheffield and your steward in charge, Mr Alan Simpson of Leeds. Thank you. 12 rounds and five and a half inches the height difference <laughs> both men weigh the same though nine stone nine the lightweight championship limit second out round one richards the south fork And if you remember, we showed you at the start of the programme when he KO'd Joe Delise up in Preston. Watch the Crook's left hook. Been out of action since we saw him win the Commonwealth title against Najib Deo. In March, broke his right hand. And we have to mention at this stage, Jim, Carl Crook, former opponent of yours in your amateur days. That's right, I boxed Carl as far back as 1982 in the ABA Championships in Gloucester. And uh, I'm proud to say that I did box him, because he's come on to show what great fighter he is. And for the record, you outpointed him over three rounds. That's correct. I noticed that Richardson Richards, I should say, is boxing in the Tyson style boots with no socks. Very popular. He now. looks like a little sawn off Tyson, doesn't he? He sure does. He looks a real power. Little, little muscle man. You know, Carl Crook is an army boy, as we just said, and he fights with pure discipline. Everything's disciplined. Being a former paratrooper. Both boys look in tremendous shape. Wonderful atmosphere at the City Hall. And both these boys have a lot of respect. As I said, they've met before. Richards won. Oh, what am I saying? Crook won. When they met previously. Sizing up, Brand, even though they've boxed before, there's a little bit of respect on both sides. And I wonder if both of them have memories of that fight in June 1987. Eight rounder on that occasion. And Crook won quite easily. Favourite tonight, of course. Good feeling right hand there from Carl Crook, snapped it through. And he'll want to let loose a couple of right hands to just convince himself that the injury's healed. Big difference between wearing big sparring gloves and these uh, eight ounce gloves. Six ounce, I should say. No, that's that's and too technical. Carl Crook's two greatest assets, his hand speed and his foot speed, and I think he's going to need both of them tonight. Richard looks very strong. Early evening opening round. In the Richard's corner.
despite losing 11 out of the 26, just stopped twice. Andy Holligan, oh, no disgrace in that, and Humphrey Harrison as well. I'm sure he's in tremendous shape. I know he's got Ken Squires working in his corner, former trainer of people like Tony Fickton, Chris Park. Seconds out, round two. Yeah, Squire and Simpson was uh, maybe as famous a partnership as England Graham. Huntley and Palmer. Round two. Now Richard has obviously jumped it into his head, although he's the underdog. He's seen Kevin Pritchard and James Cook also be underdogs and win the British title and just recently. And all things happen in freeze, and I'm sure he's trying to pump it up inside his mind. But he'll need to box superb to beat Carl Cook. Body shot there from Richards downstairs. He's tried that once or twice and Cole's absorbed it well, but it could pay dividends in a long fight. on Carl Cook's face. Good left. It's fantastic. Richard's full of determination. Knows this is his big chance. And Richard's bleeding from the nose now. <laughs> Only in round two. in good shape, actually. Leading quite badly. Yeah, Carl Cook's very accurate. Very accurate puncher, and obviously, it's testimony of it is the, the nosebleed on Richard's face already. Well, I said there was a, a great atmosphere here. Um, a section of the crowd getting a little aerated, but that's under control, happy to tell you. Let's concentrate on what's going on in the ring. That was a good left hook. That really was. That was the punch that accounted for Joe Delis. As the hook came up, I cut that, and it was like short and screwed it right through the gap. Any aggro outside the ring? We want to confine that to inside the ring. But uh, almost like another local derby, this. Seconds out. And uh, round three. Passions can run high. Round three. Carl Crook in the maroon and Richards in the green and yellow. himself at the moment. Yeah, he, he knows the score. 12-round fight, he's 
The fight hasn't really developed no sort of pattern at the moment. I'm sure Crook wants to stick to his boxing and use his hand speed and physical advantages to the full. He knows he can't get involved in the physical tear up with this guy. It's pointless, really. To win the fight as easy as possible. <laughs> Richards looks very strong. Um, just roughing up Crook on the inside, then. It's the right tactic he's got to use. He's got For to go sure. in and take the title. For sure. Rough him up, boss him out. Yeah, he's a short squat guy. And he knows how to use his strength when he gets in close. He likes to see Cole keep it long. He sticks to his boxing. Also, David you know, Richards knows this is possibly his one and only chance. Well, we remember Kevin Pritchard taking advantage of that chance against Huey Ford. And uh, will capitalise on it. And the best of British to him for that. And this will probably be Tony Richards' one and only chance of becoming a British champion. Up to him. I'm sure he's worked very, very hard for this one. Might only get one bite of the cherry, so he wants to make sure he gets a full mouthful. But he's boxing a good champion. And let's not forget that. Carl's a very underrated guy, very disciplined, very dedicated, and he's been in the game a long time. <laughs> and he's hungry for the, the, the checks that come out of titles. So, very determined champion. Inside the last minute of this third round. Unquestionably the heavier hitter of these two, but remember what I said a moment or so ago, Richards has only been stopped twice. But at this point, Crook in control. Ten seconds. Richards troubled by that nose injury he picked up in the second round. We saw in the third round, just a glimpse of what Richard should be doing, getting inside and roughing Crook up a little bit. And he needs to do a little bit more of that. He's certainly got the strength to get inside, Jim. He looks very, very strong. You know, he has thought it was a light welterweight. And, uh, he doesn't look big enough to be a light welterweight, but he looks a very strong lightweight. He's obviously got a lot of confidence from the knockout victory he had over Peter Till, and he'll be looking to achieve a similar result tonight. As we saw up in Preston against Najib Deo earlier in the year, if you let Carl Crook dictate the fight, he will just cut you to ribbons, which he did against Najib Deo. Richards has simply just got to get him close and do exactly that, hustle him out of it. Body shots, rough him up. Doesn't want to take too many of those there, a good right counter. Very accurate, very accurate right hand for Carl Crook there. <laughs> you know, Richards' way of winning the contest is to get close and be a bully, and be aggressive and physically stay on top of the That's right what he now. needs to do, two good lefts. Mid distance, here come on second bus. <laughs> he certainly looks sharp, Richards. Well, oh, cute. Crooks no shrinking violet. Any man who spends half his adult life jumping out of aeroplanes and the other half as a professional boxer. He's, uh, he's a hard case, this boy. Carl won't be found wanting in that department, that's for sure. Pleased to see Cole Cook's adopting the right type of tactics for this particular fight. He's keeping his hands up in a good guarded position when he'll need Got to. Tag there. 
Richards is dangerous. Good right up a cut. Been around this for the challenger. It's been his best round so far. Starting to get the taste in his mouth for the fight. And doing some good work inside Richards in this round. But he's, he's spinning and blowing a lot of blood. And I'm not sure just how serious that nose injury is. Yeah, Cole Chen just dropped short there with his punches. Slightly out of range, but you know, Richard's got through one or two good shots in that round. I'm sure he'll gain in confidence himself. Tony Richards, self-managed, brought in Ken Squires to help him out. Now he used to be in Tony Simpson's corner. Round five. Carl Crook defending his Commonwealth Championship. Up for grabs, the vacant lightweight championship of Great Britain, vacated by Steve Boyle. You know, um, a stable mate of Carl Crook's not acting as his official spy tonight, but I couldn't help but overhearing Ken Squires telling Richards to concentrate more on the body shots. And I think that would be a good tactic for Richards if it's going to go to the 12 round distance. Short squat guy, he seems to get a lot of leverage into that left hand downstairs. <laughs> Counter punching from Carl Crook there, Doug. Pass. The telling weapon that Crook jab. thinking cap on tonight and he's really having to work overtime on the concentration for this particular little opponent Richards. He's very fast Richards. When Richards gets in close, he clambers all over Crook, but Crook has got to keep that this fight at a distance. Good right from the, ch the Commonwealth champion. Ships a couple of lefts. Both boys seem oblivious to punishment. Both absorbing and giving tremendous they're, shots. They're taking, yeah. They took the words right out of my mouth, Jim. <laughs> Good right hand left up from Crook there. The left took, remember, the potent weapon in Crook's armory. I must say, the first time I've ever seen Mitch, I'm impressed by him. He seems to use his height as an asset. He gets lower and makes things very, very awkward, becomes a very small target. in the challenger's corner. This squad's working overtime on the left.
Crook. Still a grease going on the eyebrows. No, no damage to either boy, save that uh, damaged nose that Richards picked up in the second. You make out a case for either boy, Jim, at the moment. Yeah, no one's really adopted any superiority at this stage of the fight. And it's, um, it's all out for grabs at the moment. I'm sure Carl knows that. It's certainly a much tougher fight than the Najib Deo fight for him. You now, when guys come in and they're given that one chance, you can guarantee they're going to be in tremendous shape and give it 200%. And Richards just, is certainly doing that. I just wonder, Jim, how that right hand of his is feeling, Carl Crooks. I think you summed it up perfectly at the beginning of the contest, Dave, when you said it's unlike sparring. This is for real, and it's six hands gloves, and only Cole will know how he feels right now. But he's going to need two hands against this fella. Not half. Plus the shots there from That's the, the perfect response from Crook as Richards came in then. for Crook. Yeah, he's getting accurate. He always is accurate, but he's getting very accurate in this one. Richardson's a very small target, Dave. He doesn't offer a lot of himself. Squat guy, very, very short for a lightweight. He makes himself very, very elusive. Yes, remember the height difference between these two boys, five and a half inches in Crook's favour. That's a big difference. When he said that, the one shot I've been really impressed at Richard's throws is the jab. And a short guy, he gets over that right jab. Long arms. <laughs> Big muscles in. <laughs> So cool. Goes back to his schooling. Very cool customer, Carl. Oops. <laughs> Brush the gloves down. A little smile from Richards. No reaction at all from Crook. No, he's all business, very passive. We'll do a smiling afterwards, hopefully. 